Father, please, I ask you to use me to speak to your precious people. Lord, I pray that I will be simple and clear, and your voice will thunder in this altar. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name, and somebody said, Amen. Amen. Today, walk your faith. Tell your neighbor, walk your faith. faith. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Kitabu ni chawarumi. Study wa kwanza. Study. Mlango wa kwanza. Na dirisha. Ya. Yeah. <laughs> Study wa kumina samba. Amen. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Let's read from the amplified version. And because I know most of you don't have it. It's on the screen. One to go. For in the gospel a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed. Both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. All right, okay, shall live and shall live by faith. Now, let's, let's go to Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. And I see you want us to read uh, uh, Amplified. Want to go? It's on the screen. It's okay. It's on the, it's on the screen. Want to go? Look at the proud. He saw it's not straight or right within him. But the just and the uncompromisingly righteous man shall live by his faith and in his faithfulness. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. All right. Put the same scriptures in uh, New King James Version. All right, let's go to Romans 1 and verse 17. 1 and verse 17. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. One to God. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Somebody say the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2.4. Let's read New King James Version. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live. Did you notice, notice the difference? The first one is the just shall live by faith. The second word, the just shall live by? By his faith. By his faith. By his faith. Now look at your neighbor, tell them, walk your faith and sit down in the presence of God. Walk your faith as you sit down in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to be long before you. Work your faith. God in his infinite wisdom 
gave us a formula of life. He gave us a formula of life. God in his great wisdom and power, he said, as my children, I want to give you a formula for you to live by. I don't want you to just be helter-skelter. I don't want you to be running around. I want you to have a formula of life. And this is a formula of victory. It's a formula of righteousness. It's a formula of, 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 of rising higher in God. And he said, as a child of God, as a righteous man, you shall live by faith. How many righteous people are in the house? Let me see your hand. Wave your hands. One of these days I'll come and teach you what it means to be a righteous man. The righteousness of God. Imputing righteousness upon you. Not by work, but by faith. Now, the Bible says that the just, the righteous man, shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That is the formula that God gave us for living. The just shall live by faith. The just shall not live by his paycheck. The just shall not live by human connections. The just shall not live by their academic qualifications. They shall not live by their tribe. You could be a Giriyama. You could be a Taita. You could be a, 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 a Bukusu. Yeah. But the just shall not live by their tribe. You could be a Luo, a Kikuyu, a Kaba. You could be White Papati. Or you could be you know, a, a ODM or Jubilee. But the Bible says the just shall not live by their uh, political affiliations. The just shall live by faith. The just shall not live by their sweat. They shall not live by having a sponsor or a sponsory. Mama Kiwinya. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, then Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, the Bible says, The just shall not only live by faith, the just shall live by their faith. Somebody say your faith. That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm laying the foundation, that faith is personal. Faith is personal. The just shall live by their faith. That is to say, faith is personal. So you can have a pastor that is full of faith. You can have a, but you can still be stuck. You can have a church that is being preached faith and fail to benefit completely. You can marry a wife. Come on, somebody. You can marry a wife who is full of faith and still remain stuck for a decade. Because while children are communal, faith is personal. Somebody say faith is personal. Faith is like legs. If we are to move from here to the center of the field. We have to use our legs, individual legs. If you don't use your individual legs, we have to carry you. And how many people know that people get easily tired? People, people get easily tired to carry you. If we carry you on our back, after some times we are going to request you, please, can you step down and use your own legs? That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, you must develop your own personal faith if you're going to overcome the battles of life. You have to develop your own personal faith if you're going to rise from where you are to where God wants you to be. You must develop your own personal faith if your finances will move to the next level. You must develop your own personal faith if you're to overcome smoking and drinking and fornication. You have to develop your own personal faith. Somebody say faith is personal. Faith is like a hard to achieve. Or faith is like a toothbrush. You can't share. It is personal. So having known that, ladies and gentlemen, that faith is personal and the just shall live by faith, I want us to understand what is faith. I want us to learn today what is faith. And I want everybody to keep smiling at me even as I labor to, to this morning. And I believe that God will help me to communicate so clearly what is faith. Now, what is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Give it on the, on, the, on, the, on the screen, please. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 gives us the definition of faith. Alright. Can you see it on the screen? Let's read together. One to go. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed, my goodness me, of the things we hope for. Being the proof of things 
we do not see. And the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact. What is not revealed to the senses. Now, if God says the just shall live by faith. If God says you're going to live by faith. It is important for you to understand what is it God is talking about that I'm going to live with. What is it that will determine the quality of my life, the quality of my work with God? If God says you are not, you can't do without something, I think it is prudent as a child of God, it is prudent as a believer to go into the word of God and begin to dig and ask yourself, what is it that God is saying I can't do without? Mm. And he says, faith. It's the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Somebody say the title deed. Now give me a title deed because I came with a title deed today. I requested Satone to bring me a title deed. And the reason why I brought the title deed, I wanted for us to look at it and see what faith is, Tony. What faith is because faith is a title deed. Somebody say title deed. How many people here have been living God to have some properties? Glory be to God. May you receive them in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Turn my, turn my, my, my uh, 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 speakers, if you can, please. Now, faith is a title deed. That is to say, Tony, come here and you get me a little bit. Now, why do we need a title deed and why do we have a title? What is this? Because this is just a paper. Give me another paper. Give me another paper in somebody. Now, what is the difference be between this paper Mr. Mohammed has brought me, which is plain, and the title deed that I have? I'm going to preach a storm today. And the title deed that I have, what is the difference? Give me the difference, Tony. The title deed bears the, uh, shows that you are actually a possessor of the property. The title deed shows you are a possessor of the property. Let me ask you, this envelope shows what? Nothing. It shows you are a possessor of the envelope. <laughs> but the title deed says you are a possessor of the property. So Tony, if I have this title deed, I, I, I own some property. Somewhere in Shokimau. Somewhere in, uh, in Ruda. Glory be to God. In Ruda. Amen. In Ruda. Somebody say Ruda. Glory be to God. Now, if I have it, I don't have to carry the land in the boot of my car. See you? Because I can fold the land and then put it in an envelope and carry it in the boot of my car. But if I have the title deed, I, ha I am the possessor of the property. Amen. True. True. So the property is mine because I have the title deed. Now listen to this. Thank you, Tony. When you have the title deed called faith, glory be to God. When you have it in your own possession, that is to say, whatever the title deed says, you are a possessor of the same. Mama, mama, mama. Because you don't have to carry the lot in the boot of your car to say, this is my lot. You don't have to carry it, fold it, and put it somewhere where moats and rodents and rats cannot be able to invade it. But you can be able to carry the title deed. Now, if somebody who is full of devils, comes and says, no, the property is not yours. No. No, Pastor Dan. The property is not yours. We have large grabbers in Kenya. And uh, when they come and say, this is our property, or they go to the large office, that is Avi House, I believe, and they say, we are going to prove to you that this is not your property. All I need to do is to look at them in the eye and tell them shetani shidwe because i can go into my private stuff that i keep and bring you a title deed and i can prove the title deed is written title number kjd this and this and the other approximately area ruda kireleshwa Glory be to God. Legistry map sheet there. And this is to certify that Daniel Murage Kedaka. Hey! 
Daniel Morale Kedaka. ID 22, 34, 72, 75. P.O. Box 375, that don't go. <laughs> is the processor is now registered as the absolute proprietor. Somebody say proprietor. Abso somebody say absolute. Absolute means we are not sharing with somebody. Absolute means it is his and his for keeps. Of the land comprised in the above mentioned title, subject to the entries in the registrar relating to the land and to such of the overriding interest. And then it says, given under my heart and the seal. And then there's a seal here. Hear me. If somebody has to go and change it, they have to go to the other house and you have to be there to sign and to change the ownership from myself to Pastor Edward. Hear me. If, some, if faith is a title, bring back my scripture. If faith is a title deed, that means when you possess faith, you have possessed your miracle. Yeah. Somebody say amen. And that is to say, if the devil comes and says the miracle is not yours, what you need to do is to produce the title deed. <laughs> is to produce your faith. If they have to change the ownership of what is in the title deed, they have to go to the registrar's office. But I want to let you know, the faith registrar's office is not in Nairobi, Kenya. It's not somewhere in Kenyatta Avenue. It is in the heavenlies. And if somebody has to take your blessing, they have to go to the heavenlies, snatch it from Jehovah God. And how many people know that is impossible? That's why I came to declare the devil cannot take your healing. The devil cannot take your marriage. The devil cannot take your blessing. Somebody say faith. So the just shall live by faith. Somebody say by faith. Some of you, the problem that you have, the reason why we are stuck, is because we are trying to be logical in everything we do. We try to do everything logically. We try to think logically. We sweat. We wake up in the morning. And I believe in diligence. I preach a game in this church. I preach giving your oil. I preach excellence. But I want to say this. More than excellence, you have to be a woman of faith. You have to be a man of faith. You have to be a lady of faith. Because the just shall live by faith. Somebody say by faith. Can I talk to somebody today? Somebody tell your neighbor, neighbor, tell two people that just shall live by faith. So how does faith come? How does faith come? Let's go to Romans 10 and verse 17. So that faith comes... Let's read together one to go. And hearing by the word of God. That is to say, when I come and tell you, when I come and preach, that's why you need to be in the right church. You can't be in a church where all they do is talk a shidwe, talk a you, you, can't, you have to be in a place where the word of God is being preached. Because it is not 